All right, we are back. And this time it is going to be with Police Quest 1, the EGA version. So if you like what I've done with these videos, if you've watched a couple of the other ones, do me a favor. Go ahead and break out your handcuffs, put it around the like button, and click it. And then arrest the subscribe button by pushing it into your car. But first, make sure you press the subscribe button. So let's go ahead and talk about Police Quest 1 now that I've done my little pitch of clicking like and subscribe. And if you're so inclined, share. So we start off with Sonny Bonds. Um, he goes and he gets his keys, gets his radio. We're going to go ahead and open up the locker. We're going to get our gun, our ammo. Don't forget your cuffs. Oh, wait, we already have it. Get the briefcase, because that's where all your notes and stuff are for writing tickets. And we're going to go ahead and head into the meeting. Or, sorry, the briefing, if you will, as apparently the police term is. And there is a newspaper here on this desk, so you're going to go ahead and read it. There is a little article here about Sonny. There's... So cool, you made the paper. There is stuff about drugs and stuff like that. And uh, you would think, since the newspaper was there, that they've led you to your desk. Uh, but that's not the case. Because as you stand there, he says, hey, Sonny, find your desk. And so you move to your proper desk position. Because I didn't even think there would be somewhere where you have to stand. I thought it was just more important that you show up to it. And why do these cops not have like chairs to sit in for their briefing? They've just got to stand. Anyway. So we talk about how there's a Cadillac with this license plate that's been stolen. So you have to keep an eye out for that. And then he talks about how some kids were arrested for drugs. And then you get your call sign, which is 8332. So the big thing is the drugs. That's going to be a big part of what this Police Quest game is going to be about, is finding out what's going on with the drugs and stuff like that. So first we're going to check to see if we have any notes. And there we go. We find a message from Steve that says, hey, how about an 1198, which I assume is a break because I don't have the codes memorized, over at Carol's Caffeine Palace or whatever it's called. So now that we know that, uh, we're going to go ahead and start the game and save. And it sure does clear quickly. So we're just going to go through all these different doors, get yelled at by people who say, get out of my office, go do your job. Open here, uh, it's a computer. So billboard here, you would think normally they would do like either something for the game or they would do a plug for something else, but that's not the case. So we're going to go ahead and look at the thing. There's some memos here. No need to get it yet. You will be coming back to do something with the memos. Laura, who you'll get to know better, not in that kind of way. Uh, she'll say, go ahead and get out of here. You're going to get busted for killing time. If you open this door, this is the chief guy with narcotics. He's like, uh, hey, uh, why don't you get out and go do your job? I'm like, cool. Everyone just wants me to do my job. Isn't that funny how life works? So one of the big things you have to do is inspect your car. Every time you get into your cop car or even the undercover car, you have to inspect it. Ironically, the blue Corvette that you see there, that is yours. You do not have to inspect. You can just get in that and drive away. So one of the most difficult things for me has right there as you can see is driving in this game even when i slowed the speed down i often overcompensated with how quickly i was trying to turn or worse when i was trying to park like at carol's or something like that where you know have to do some fancy driving and stuff like that it was uh very painful now the one thing i do like about this though is you can go in reverse and no one really cares and so we get a call that there is a accident so now we just need to find out where this accident is. And that requires looking at the map, which as you can see, I just say, I need to run out the map. And what I actually did is I just found the map online and I just had it open on another monitor so I could easily reference it to know what streets are what. So I had to restore a little bit further back because I didn't pay attention to where this accident happened at. Oh, and also, uh, you can't run red lights because that's game over. <laughs> now, if you hit F10, I believe it is, to turn on your sirens, then you can run red lights. There we go, southwest corner of Fig and Forth. So now I've just got to look at the map 
and find out where Fig and Forth is. So ironically, not that hard to see, even though I passed right by it. You can see that there's a green car, <laughs> and I crashed, naturally. Uh, but you can see that there was a green car that was diagonal on the side, and I crashed. I am telling you, I crash so often in this game, it is ridiculous. It is like the most difficult mini game that's not a mini game. <laughs> but there is a green car that is like diagonal on the sidewalk. So I totally missed it the first time and I ended up crashing. And I missed it again right there because if I had just gone straight, you can see that the damn green car is on the sidewalk. So when you get up and you pull up, you just hit F4 to get out of the car. <laughs> I had such a rough game, uh, rough time with this game in a in a funny but frustrating way. So you're going to look at the guy. And it looks like he's clearly been shot. You're going to look at him a few times until the message repeats. And it says, oh, he's clearly been murdered. So this isn't like he had a heart attack or something and crashed. He's been murdered. So we're going to go ahead and talk to some witnesses. An exciting guy says, I saw the whole thing. A car pulled up next to him. Uh, it was a light blue, late uh, late model Cadillac, and they were side by side, and it went bang, bang, boom, boom. I thought it was a blowout. And then if you talk to him again, he'll give you a partial on the license plate, which is L964. And so apparently he was the only witness, because it just repeats that information. So you radio it in and say, this is the information I got. And they say uh, someone's on their way. So there they are. They're over, they're here to take over the investigation because now that it's murder and such, this is no longer our deal. We're just street cops. So thanks a lot. I'll go ahead and drive away and spend my time probably crashing frequently. A lot of this game is driving around waiting for them to call you to do something. And that time I didn't even, you know, I just apparently turned into a driveway that was right there that looked like it should have been a street, but clearly was not a street. Just went right into a quick park uh, uh, parking lot. And FYI, there is like this highway freeway, depending on where you're from, what you might call it, that streaks all the way from one end of the map from like the upper southeast of the map down to the north west of the map, I guess you could say. And there's actually no reason to go on it. Everything you need is actually happening on the streets. Maybe because, and I crashed again, surprise, surprise. Uh, maybe that's because they have like highway patrol. So you're just a street cop kind of guy who just deals with city stuff, not highway patrol stuff. That said, I don't know why they put this highway thing through the town if you're actually not going to use it or be a part of the game. Because all it does is obstruct the streets, which I feel like would have flowed much better if there wasn't this freeway highway going across halfway through this map, like right there. I guess uh, if you wanted to avoid lights and get somewhere faster, you could. And so here I am trying desperately to park, and I did it. Yeah. Now, an important thing to note is every time you get out of your cop car, you should close the door, right? Because that's just a logical thing to do. Uh, you'll see what happens if you don't close the door later on, because I accidentally make the mistake of getting out of my car, going in somewhere, coming out, <laughs> and uh, my car's gone. So... <laughs> Like I said, a frustrating but funny kind of way. I kind of chuckled uh, because it was it was sometimes so infuriating that I didn't actually get mad. I actually laughed through most of it, like how frequently I crashed. So the phone rings uh, after you meet with Steve. And it says, hey man, you just come in? All right, cool. So other than meeting Steve and then just trying to park the car and um, going there actually doesn't serve too much of a purpose, but whatever. And you can see I save so frequently if you pay attention to... <laughs> I crashed again. Uh, you can see uh, 
I saved so frequently in this game that I had, I believe, five different directories. Um, and each of them holds 12 save games. So that shows you how frequently I was saving uh, for different parts of the game that were requiring me to do different things. And a lot of times, if it was just me driving in circles, I frequently just saved over saying, I'm driving around. Because I crashed all too often. So in order for certain messages to come to your radio, you have to be driving around for, I guess, X amount of time to trigger it. And now he just said he's aching to write a ticket, which, I mean, I guess that's a little honest. Um, you know, cops wanting to write tickets because that's their quota. That's, I guess, their job. So they're just looking for someone. And there you go. Right then, a girl runs a red light. So hit the F10, pull her over. Use radio to check her license, which is like OMG something. Go ahead and get out. And that background should look very familiar. If you've played Leisure Suit Larry 1, you'll recognize it that that's the disco. Uh, the bouncer normally stands right there. I thought it had actually been kind of funny if the bouncer was there. But I guess that would mean it was in Lost Wages versus Lighten or Lytton, however you want to pronounce the city that he's in. So you go over here, look at the woman. She looks to me like she was someone out of Leash Suit Larry. I double checked afterwards and she's not. She just looks like she was. So you'll see I'll actually save my game like Leash Suit Larry reference or something like that. And she gets flirty, uh, you know, with her top down and the way she's talking. He asks for a license and get all that stuff. And she quickly turns sour. And if she asks for her license again, she'll get even more angry. Try to be friendly and wave, but she doesn't she doesn't care. Alright, so we got our ticket done, so let's drive. <laughs> I feel like we should be able to arrest her for calling us names. But I guess that's not a felony of any kind. So once again, we find ourselves driving in circles. Um, at times like this, you'll see me stop. And what I'm doing is I'm looking at the map to see where things are uh, in terms of like, am I on fig? Am I on fourth? The the numbers are easy because it's like for a second that third going across that way but it's the streets going the other way like oak and stuff like that that are going um, down versus left to right uh, that's where I just really need to find out what street I'm typically on and also I've noticed when you're at those lights if there's someone there and they're turning they don't care that you want to go straight they just turn right in front of you every single time so right there, you can see we're at Carol's again, and you can see something's right in front of there. So, oh, some motorcycles, which is what we got the call about. And I do believe this is where I leave my door open. Yes, it is. So making the bad mistake of going in there, leaving my door open. We're going to go in here and talk to Carol. And she says, hey, some motorcycles are blocking the parking lot. None of my customers can park. Which, to me, is kind of odd. She has a bunch of customers in here. Where are all these people parking anyway? Like, where would her new customers park? And boom, my car's gone because I left the, <laughs> left the door open. All right, so we're going to restore, go back in. We're going to speed it up since we already know what the issue is. Go back over here and talk to Carol. Yep, yep, yep. All right, go back out. All right, let's go over here over to Wino Willie's. And we see some notorious-looking bikers. They badmouth us. We ask them to move their bikes. They're like, no way. We don't talk to pigs. And then you try to threaten them, and it says, oh, you don't have your nightstick. Freaking great. So go back in the car, open the door, sit down, get the nightstick. Well, first look in the car, and then get the nightstick. Close the door. Close the door. Go back in here. <laughs> and this is hilarious. He just starts swinging his nightstick around. Wah, wah, wah. And apparently that is enough to calm these bikers down who are like, oh man, no, we don't want to do that. And one of the women at the bar is a girl named Sweet Cheeks Marie, who happens to be a prostitute or a lady of the evening or 
uh, escort, however you'd like to phrase it. I'm not sure what the proper phrase is for these women. Uh, so she, you, she gives you some information saying, hey, I've heard some stuff about a drug deal. And in exchange, she's kind of your informant. Um, you drop some knowledge that there is a sting uh, to track down and capture um, ladies of the evening, escorts, however you'd like to phrase it. So even though we got rid of the cops, you talked to Carol, she, or Carl, Carol, uh, they don't care. Whatever. And then get back in the car, and we're going to go ahead and drive some more. Clearly my favorite part of the game. <laughs> as I save the game as driving, sigh. I crashed. And we just got a call. We're now, I think this is part where we're now on the lookout for a blue Cadillac. Which they suspect is a guy who shot the guy from the first accident. Oh no, this, the next thing is the drunk driver. Yeah, that's right. Who I am clearly having a difficult time chasing around. I do find it funny that I pulled him over next to what is clearly a park on the map, but then when we see him, it's in front of these houses. So we use a radio and check the license plate of programmer, and it looks like it's him. Dude's clearly drunk. And is it me, or does that look like Al Lowe? Which, <laughs> I don't think Al Lowe has a history of getting DUIs, but this guy does. So I had to look up what it is that, what it's called when you get a DUI, what you have to do. And that was administer the FTR, whatever it is. And so we've done that. We've proven he is pretty drunk. So we cuff him, say, hey, follow me. You're going to take a little ride. I tried putting the suspect in the car. And apparently he'll just go in on his own which is very weird. Most people will not just willingly go into the back of a cop car. Usually the cop has to help them so they don't bump their head if, if their hands are cuffed. And I noticed that I forgot to um, I forgot to search him. So one of the things you always kind of want to do is search a guy once you've cuffed him. So we're going to cuff him, read him his rights. We already administered the FTR thing. Open the door. He goes in the door. Close the door. All right, we got the drunk guy. So now we got to go to jail. And he says, what about my car? And you explain, no, don't worry. We'll go ahead and get it towed for you. So right up here is the jail. Wanting to this green car to pass me, but apparently he doesn't want to. Pulling into the jail is fairly easy. I don't think I crash in the jail. Uh, it's a pretty open space to pull into. So one of the things you're going to have to do is when you get here, you have to open this locker, put your gun in the locker, close the locker, and then go press the button to let let you in. So we go ahead and bring him in. It says, cool, we got the paperwork. Fill out the paperwork, and you take off the cuffs. 
and into jail he goes. And in comes Laura, and she says, hey, uh, we're looking to get someone for narcotics or something like that. And you talk to him, and he says, hey, they just called, get over there. So don't forget your gun, so open the locker, get the gun, close the locker. Now, thankfully, the police office is right next to the city court, right next to the jail. So it's literally just one screen up. Get out, close the door. And by the way, the nightstick has to stay in the car, which they don't mention when you go to the jail, because we pulled it out when we went to Carol's to deal with the bikers, but it didn't care when we went to the jail. But apparently when you go back into the police station, it has to be in the car. So you write a memo to transfer and you put the memo in the basket. And that's gonna go ahead and put your name in for narcotics, which Laura mentioned. And here we have the officer of the regular officer saying, uh, there's someone by the name of Gremlin who I never found out who it was. Clearly it's not Sonny, but someone keeps pranking the main officer. And when we open the door, we'll see there is a chicken with feathers everywhere and it's pooped everywhere, which seems like a serious violation. So whoever this prankster is, uh, it's really risking their job because, I mean, there's feces all over his desk uh, when you look at the description. And then when you say get feather from the chicken, it says you can do that in King's Quest 3. And they mention that they're throwing a little party for one of the officers at the blue room. Why don't you swing by? So you return the key, return the radio. And ironically, the one who told you about it, he doesn't show up. Seems kind of rude. So in order to change clothes, apparently every time you change clothes, you have to shower. Which makes sense, but you'd kind of think, doesn't Sonny have a house where he can also shower? No, not in Police Quest 1. There is no house. So now go ahead and change clothes into your normal clothes, and you're going to have to get your keys and stuff. So I save the game as regular clothes, blue room, so I know where I'm going next. And apparently the life of being a cop pays pretty well because he does have a Corvette. So Sonny's doing pretty good for himself. Uh, I think most cops I know at that level don't own a Corvette. Maybe I just don't know the right cops. So we're off to the blue room. Which is right here. And I crashed. <laughs> and I crashed. And I crashed. I made it. So you can look at the jukebox. Um, if you've not played this game, I don't recommend playing the jukebox because it is a series of beeps and boops and bops. And I get it's supposed to be a real song, but the music back in these days was pretty limited to how they generate it through these type of games. So it's almost a little more annoying that it is actually uh, entertaining. So a few of the cops show up and they bring a cake and he is freaking out. And here is the hula girl named Coochie Hannah. So, okay. She kisses him and lets go of the balloons, does a little dance. And you do find out that, that that this officer, his life's pretty much falling apart. Hoochie Coochie Hannah, sorry. There we go. His life is falling apart. Uh, he's been divorced from his wife. His daughter has been hooked on drugs. Um, he's got like a serious drinking problem now. So this dude is not doing well for himself. So we get a notice that we have to go back to the station.
So we made it pretty much without incident. No crashing. Let's find out what's next. So we're going to go ahead and head in here. Go talk. Oh, yeah, that's right. This is the swing shift that you made with Keith that apparently we forgot about. So we have to first take a shower because we have to change clothes. And the shower is quickly as turn on than turn off. But by the way, uh, as you talk to these cops who are standing there, they'll each tell you either about drugs or about that cop taking a shower. Now you'll notice I left the shower on. That's going to cost me a point, at which point I'm going to have to restore again. Leap, see? We got talk to point. So rather than just letting you go back, change, and turn off the shower, they just dock you a point for it. So I went ahead and just restored. We're going to do this whole thing again. All right, so we got our gun, our ammo, and all that stuff. We're going to head into the briefing room. And you're going to get scolded for being late. So you get information that someone else has been killed, and now it may be tied to the same Cadillac that killed the uh, first guy, where we have the partial plate. Then you get a message from an unknown informant, which is Marie, who informs you that there is some uh, potential gambling issues of the illegal kind happening at this hotel, Delphone, I believe it's pronounced. So in the meantime, we're just going to hit the streets again and drive around until we get a call to do something. As always, even though we checked our car earlier, you have to check it every single time. So walk around the car and say check car until it tells you it's good, and then you can drive off. Alright, this is a call where we get the Cadillac, and he happens to be right there, and I try to pull him over, but I'm next to him. And it's weird, like the Cadillac extended, so I'm going to go ahead and try to get behind him, stay behind him, and he pulls over. And it looks like the plate matches the partial we have, so we're pretty much onto the right guy. So we use the radio, say, hey, you know what, probably need some backup. And what you don't want to do is get out, because <laughs> uh, he will shoot you. So what you have to do is wait for backup. And you go ahead and put it on the fastest speed, get the backup here as soon as possible. And now it's actually safe. Once the backup gets there to cover you on one side, you get out, load your gun, and pull out your gun. This guy, even before he shot you, clearly a threat since he killed the first guy. And the thing is, if he keeps walking towards you before you say anything, you have to say halt and he'll stop. You have to literally tell him to stop, lay or stop, raise your arms, lay down, and then you can cuff him. And it's funny, when you say search, it says you find some pocket change, and then the next message is, oh, and a gun. So then you read him as Miranda writes stand up and make him get in the car. So now we use the radio, say, hey, you know what, we got it. Code 4 is clear. Let's go search this car and see what we find. So we open the glove compartment. There is a black book and some IDs here. So we're going to go ahead and look at both of those. I mean, you can flip through this by using the arrow keys. And there's some codes with X's next to it. So you can kind of tell what's been done or perhaps what needs to be done. And 
then let's go ahead and check the trunk. So obviously we got to take this guy back to jail. And this guy is problematic in this game because uh, this is not the last we hear of him, naturally. So you file the paperwork, take off the cuffs, throw him in his jail, and he's like, this will be a short trip. So you come back out, and now they want to talk to us back at the police station. So open the locker, get your gun, close the locker, and let's get back in the car. Now, ironically, you don't have to check your car any other time except for when you're at the police station. So when you're at the jail, you don't have to worry about it. Real quick, I apologize if you can suddenly hear like wind behind me. My office got really hot, so I went and grabbed a fan that it's blowing directly behind me. So there may be some windy sounds. I am not running really fast or driving in a car while I'm talking. Uh, it's just the fan. So we go into the memo or go into his office and there was a memo there concerning us about our transfer. So we're gonna go ahead and go in here and get changed because you have to change every time. I just thought it'd be fun to walk towards him. <laughs> and he says, hey man, what are you staring at? Uh, because he's always in the shower. Apparently he uses the shower for everything if you talk to the other cops. So we're gonna go ahead and change into our street clothes. Nothing for the briefing. Uh, it does say Sonny got promoted, so that's kind of cool. And there is nothing in the message box. So that's the computer room. That's Laura. We're going to go over here. And he's going to say, hey, come over to my desk. Says, hey, you know, your new partner is Laura Watts, who we've met. She's in the room over there. So he says, go talk to her. So we're going to go head over here and talk to Laura. And she's going to say, hey, welcome. Let me show you around. This is a filing cabinet. This is the clipboard. I've been meaning to update it. And this is your little office. And our call is 83 Nora 10. So now we have some information. So what we're going to do, and she says um, and that Jerk Hoffman has gotten a lawyer who uh, is a big deal. And the judge, who doesn't really believe that Palmer or Hoffman is the same guy as uh, Tilleman or whatever his name is, uh, only set the bail at $500,000. So we need to find evidence to prove that this guy is the same guy who shot the guy and tie the two together. So we have his alias as Hoffman and the other one. So what we need to do is somehow find some collaborating evidence. And so what I went ahead and did here, which is not necessary if you're playing the game, is I went through all of these files to see if there was something that tied Hoffman to any of these individuals. And mostly they're just random things in there. None of them actually tie to Hoffman. But some of them are kind of funny. Like she has a really bad breath. That's her big thing. It's not why she was arrested. It's just one of the notes that they have about her. So now we're going to go ahead over here, and now she's saying the lawyer's on the way. You better hurry up like I'm not trying. So we're going to go ahead and get the clipboard, and we're going to flip through it. There's some information here, but on the very last page is something that we're going to find. Bam! Jason Tasselli, who is the same person as Hoffman. So we've got some more information now, but this isn't everything. We still have to do one more thing.
to tie it all together. We're going to grab a key for our undercover car. We're going to head over to the computer and see if we can find out any more information. So if you look at Hoffman and Tacelli, uh, there is a note about Tacelli about the tattoo that he has over his nipple of a rose. So we're going to grab our radio and we're going to rush over to the courthouse and try not to crash. And once again, as always, even though this is the undercover car, who would mess with it? Just make sure everything looks good. When you get the OK, jump in there and let's get to the courthouse. Managed to get to the courthouse without incident, i.e. crashing. So it's an improvement. Gonna go over here, tell this guy, hey, this is an emergency. Like, we need to talk to this judge, ASAP. So he says, cool, I'll be right back. Go ahead and go in. And Judge Palmer says, all right, go ahead and approach the bench. So we're gonna show him the FBI record and we're gonna show him the other evidence. And he says, how can you prove it? And you mentioned the tattoo over his nipple. And so upon that, we can confirm that it is him. And there is, he tells you now to head to jail because that's where um, the lawyer's trying to get him out. Um, but they do set the bail for no parole. So now we have to go to the jail with the warrant to ensure, which is just across the street, so super easy. Not sure why Sonny just couldn't walk across the street, but there you have it. We had to get in the car and drive across the street. So we go in. He says the lawyer's going to be here any minute, and then we give the warrant to the officer. He comes back and says, man, that made my day. That lawyer was so pissed. So when you talk to him, he says, you know, slain dirt pig, whatever. He wants nothing to do with you and still says it's going to be a short stay. And he's not wrong because, spoiler alert, he's about to escape. So we made it back to the police station without incident, and then Laura comes in. She's like, hey, uh, we just got uh, info about a drug deal going down at the park. So now we have to head for the park. And as the save game says, I'm going to look at the map real quick, see which park. Because there's actually two parks. There is one that's called Cotton Cove or something like that, and then there's an actual park. The park is actually all the way to the left. And if you drive around, there's actually one of the maps, one of the squares actually looks like a park as well. But it's this right over here where I crashed quite a few times, if I remember correctly. No, only once. Um, and now we have to do this. This part took, I want to say, like six or seven tries to get right. So one of the first things you have to do is hide so that they can't see you. Boom. So you can hide there. I think you can hide either on the left or the right side. It just has to be against the last bush. And then you have to load your gun and draw your gun. And then you wait. And this is sped up considerably. Like it took a while for this guy to show up when I actually played it. If you watch my non-commentary version, it took him a while to show up. And I make a mistake of trying to do this bust without saving <laughs> initially. So it takes a few tries to get this right. So you're supposed to wait until the drugs and money make exchange, which is now. And boom, he shoot, shoots me. So I went ahead and restored back to where I first hit, sped it up incredibly fast so that this would come real quick. And boom, he shoots me. <laughs> uh, and then when I came out that time, he bolted. Uh, which said we got the small fish, but the big fish got away. So, I mean, I think you can still technically do it, but we'd be missing out on something. So I figured I'd try again. And he 
Anthony try to yell halt and then call for backup and let Laura know that he's on the run. The other guy says, I ain't moving, man. So you arrest him, search him, read him his rights, and say, follow me. And there's Laura at the car uh, with the other guy who tried to bolt. So you do a search, you do find the cocaine, you do find the money on the other guy. So you talk to him, he won't say anything, and then he finally says, yep, if it's me, I, I go to that school, I was the one who dealt to the daughter. And so you get Leroy Pearson's number, which is 555-6537. I don't think in the game I ever actually call that number which was probably some points that I lost, because I think when I finished the game, I had 220 out of 245, so there's 20 points in this game somewhere where I missed out. So obviously we take these criminals to jail. And you'll notice for the first time when we get out of the jail, this is the first time that the basketball player says something. As you notice, he stopped um, dribbling. And he says something like, hey, do you all play basketball? <laughs> there it is. Slam dunk Donnie. So you bring him in, and Laura says, hey, you do the paperwork. I'll go get everything else set up. When asked what they're here for, just tell them you're uh, bringing them in for drugs. With that done, now to me it looks like Laura was suddenly in the driver's seat, but when you try to go to the passenger seat, it says you'll never be a passenger in this car. So you get back into the driver's seat, and I guess back to the police station, which uh, I put, I assume. I was trying to remember what I uh, called that save game. And always, just for precaution, save at the police station right before I pull in, because I did tend to crash frequently when trying to park this car. So as soon as you get there, Laura does say, hey, uh, go ahead and meet. That's not Steve. It's the other guy guy who's having all the issues in his life with the divorce and his kid and stuff like that it says to go ahead and meet him at the blue room and things are about to aside from me crashing things are about to take a drastic tragic turn for this game it gets pretty dark so you go in and there he is I'm gonna go sit down and you talk to Jack Jake yeah Jack it's Jack yeah so when you talk to him, you say, hey, man, I found the guy who was dealing. And he says, it doesn't matter. My daughter went into a coma, never woke up, and she died. So things got really dark. So the bartender says, hey, I called a cab for him because he's super wasted. So the cab driver comes, says, please don't throw up in my car, and leaves. And I tried to stand a few times, wouldn't let me. And it says, hey, Lieutenant Morgan is calling for you. Uh, because uh, Sally, or whatever his name is, the, uh, the murderer, has just escaped. And you're like, thanks, Keith. <laughs> and he says you're welcome, even though he's not even in the room. So we're going to go ahead and go back. As always, I saved before trying to park. And we're going to head inside. I know you worked hard, uh, we did everything we could, even after, you know, the paperwork that we did and the, and, and the uh, judge saying no release, um, he got out.
So in your note basket, there's a thing for the note. Don't even try to get the note, just say read note. And it concludes that the gun is the same. Everything is connecting. So now what we have to do is get some evidence. We're going to go into the black book again, kind of flip through it, even though we've already done this. Uh, the game, I think, doesn't recognize that you've read it before, so it just makes you do the whole thing again. And once we figure out how to close the book, we're going to go back. And he's not in his office, which is where he's supposed to be, so let's go see if Laura knows where he's at. And it says just after you left, a hooker called and says, hey, I have some information about the um, stuff going down. So you go back over here, and he says, hey, some hooker named Sweet Cheeks called, uh, who happens to be Marie, who we met earlier um, at the Wino Willies or whatever, next to Carol's Caffeine Palace or whatever it's called. So now we're on our way again. So jump in the car. And we learn that um, Sweet Cheeks did get busted by the trap. And speaking of traps, I forgot to check my car. So I ended up with a flat tire, which is right outside the police station. I don't know why that ends your game. should just be able to walk back and say, hey, can someone help me out? But no, that's not the case. It just ends your game. So we're going to head over to the police station and see what we can do about Sweet Cheeks. See if she can help us with the sting since she has some information. And this is me just avoiding lights that I backtracked and went around the other way to the police station. So we go over here and Sweet Cheeks says, hey, you know, I'll do anything to help you. Kiss, kiss, smooch, smooch. How are you, sweet lips? And she calls you precious. So Sunny seems to have a pretty close relationship with this lady of the evening, escort, however you want to reference it. I don't want to offend anyone who might be listening. <laughs> um, but he seems pretty close to her um, for her to be so kissy and calling him precious and stuff like that. So we're going to go over here and he makes fun because you have lipstick and she agrees to help with the sting. So now we've got our way in for the sting. But on our way back, we get a call um, for our call, 83, that something is going down at Cotton Cove, which I know is down in the lower right of the big map, which is that part down there. And you can see there's a couple cop cars there, so that's where we need to be. I'm going to go ahead and save because I notoriously crash. And we're there. So now we're at the cove. We're going to go see what's going on. Yes, it's good to see you, Sonny. Um, can you look at this body and identify it? So you remove the blanket. It says it looks like him, but it's hard to tell. Uh, but if you look at the tattoo, you have to remove his shirt to do so. Uh, it confirms the tattoo. So you use radio, confirm. And now we have to go back and meet with Morgan, who is the lieutenant who's about to give us the sting operation. So now back to driving over to the police station. Make it in without incident. Let's head inside. So there are Sweet Cheeks who somehow got here before we did. Pretty sure I took a pretty direct route. Anyway, uh, he says pretty much Sweet Cheeks is going to get us in. They are creating an identity for us named Whitey. Um, that's like our nickname. Uh, the, they're giving us a cane that has a 22 uh, Dillinger inside of it. And they're going to go ahead and dye our hair as part of our disguise. And so they say, Sweet Cheeks will meet us at the hotel. The signal will be, 
order a drink, and she'll pretend to recognize you, introduce you to the bartender, who they suspect is involved in the stuff, and this is where we find out. Actually, this is where we find out that the daughter has passed away of Jack. So, but for now, we have to concentrate. Have some hair dye going on, and we're gonna have to head to the shower, dye our hair, and go with this great disguise that we have. I will say that uh, when you do see the pimp outfit, it is rather ridiculous. <laughs> so we're going to jump in the shower, and you can see the hair dye right there. You put it in, rinse your hair. You have to put it in and rinse your hair, or else it doesn't bleach. And turn off the shower so you don't get docked a point. And now we're going to wear the suit. Boom. Pimp hat, pimp cane, pimp outfit. I'm telling you, pimpin' ain't easy. As a matter of fact, let's save the game as pimpin' ain't easy. So head over here, talk to him again. Gives you some unmarked money. So he does mention to call him, but doesn't really explain how. Spoiler alert, I forgot that there is phones in a hotel room. So I was trying to ask him for a phone, but do get his phone number, which is 555-6674, because you're going to need that to call him. So as always, check your unmarked car by walking all around it. Make sure it looks good. All right. Now we're going to head to the hotel, and we're almost done. We are almost done with the first Police Quest game. And this is why I do speed up the commentary version, because even now there's portions of this that I'll speed up where I'm actually not saying anything. Uh, if you watch the non-commentary version, there's plenty of times where it's recording the game and I totally forget. Like, I'll get up and go get a soda and, like, talk to my wife, pet my corgi, do whatever, and then come back and resume playing. And I usually try to remember when I've done that, so when I do edit the the non-commentary version, I do try to trim out where that, that has happened. But there's plenty of times where that's totally forgotten and I forgot to trim it out. But also, even when I speed up the video, there's ample spots where I'm not actually talking. So if you watch the non-commentary version, it's four hours long, and that's with the gambling portion sped up incredibly um, because I don't play poker, so I'm not that good. So it took quite a bit to beat the poker stuff. Um, and also there was ample crashing in the car. Uh, <laughs> but even like taking that five hours and not trimming it, but basically making it so it time lapse time lapses the video. Uh, this is just over an hour, and I'm still having portions where I'm not saying stuff. So even though like right now it's like an hour and ten minutes. By the time I trim out where I've not had anything to say and I speed those portions up a little bit, this video will probably knock down probably to about an hour, I'm guessing. Uh, so that's why I do, when I do the commentary versions, I do speed up the video because I can't imagine talking for five hours um, about my gameplay of playing Police Quest because there would be tons of spots where I would just zoom it up. So it's just much easier to zoom the whole video and just kind of discuss what's happening as it's happening. It's happening really fast, so it's not really perhaps ideal if you're looking for like how to do something. I do from time to time say, hey, click this or you know, say this, say that. Um, but overall, it's just mostly me talking about the game, whether I enjoyed it, like aspects of it, like crashing a lot in the car and stuff like that, just random stuff. So anyway, going back. <laughs> You've ordered your drink, Marie has introduced you to the bartender, and you're gonna take her upstairs to the room, not to do anything like that, even though that is her profession. Um, she does say, hey, do you have enough money, and all that stuff, and you just have to basically say, yes, you're good to go. And then you use the phone to call Lieutenant Morgan. And what you have to do is actually say your name. And he corrects you by saying, 
your undercover name, which I think is weird because I'm not sure if you'd want to use your cop or your undercover name when you're talking to a cop. So that might have been points I lost there by not saying the right name. So next we have to call her a taxi, so you're going to call 411 for information, get a number for a taxi, call the taxi, they ask where, they say the hotel, and she says cool, she'll take off. And she moves really fast because she's already gone. So the elevator has gone down and back up to take her. So now we're going to go ahead and show some money because now you can see some people are sitting at our table. And he's going to say, follow me. So we go over here and he's going to pat us down. It's part of the procedure. And when it gets to the gambling portion, it's going to be sped up really quick because I've never been one to play poker or really to gamble. So when I first played this game, it came out in 1987. I was 17 years old. I didn't gamble then. I still don't even gamble now. I've never been one to play poker or anything like that. So I have a very, very, very basic concept of what's good in poker. <laughs> So it took a lot of save, restore, save, restore, save, 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 restore, save, restore, save, restore, save, restore. and doing this back and forth because you have to win X amount of times to basically get quote unquote Frank's attention. Frank, you'll find out, is actually someone else. So you can see the gambling portion of this is just flying by. And this is, again, because I probably spent, what was it, like 30 minutes? Uh, trying to beat the first hand and then it's like another 30 minutes when there's a second hand So he says hey go ahead and get some money. We'll take you to the real game afterwards uh, and Just be sure to tell The bartender that Frank sent you so it is almost like a nod to leash suit Larry um, Where it says Ken sent me it should have been telling that Jim sent you like Jim should have been one of the guys But then that would have made Jim the bad guy Anyway, I digress. So you go back up to your room and you're gonna call uh, Lieutenant Morgan. Totally forgot his name. Now I'm thinking I'm thinking of Dexter. Um, anyway, no one's there. So you go in here, kind of look in the bathroom. There's nothing in the bathroom. Knock at the door comes and bam, your backup's here. Cool. So you're gonna go ahead and talk to this guy. He's like, hey, we'll be there. We'll, we got you covered. Here's a pen. Talk into the pen. Let us know what's going down. So you're like, cool. So you have to ask him for the transmitter. And that's when he tells you about the pen, and then you leave. I don't know why he wouldn't just give you the pen. Like, why is he waiting for you to ask for it? Because if you go down there without a pen, you pretty much, you're dead. Because you basically get to, quote unquote, Frank. And uh, you, you don't have a you don't have a way to basically defend yourself. I mean, you have the Derringer that is in the cane but your backup's not there and he'll die. So they do another search, they go to the second room now, and he introduces you, even though Frank, and I say that with quotes, though you can't see me doing air quotes, um, Frank already knows who you are because you were, he sat with you in the last game, in the last hand of uh, gambling, poker, whatever. And as you look closely, it is Jesse Baines, the Death Angel. And once again, this poker game is going to go flying through. One thing I did towards that second hand near the end, um, it's really hard to tell because of how fast it sped, but if you watch the non-commentary version, you can see it. It might not be obvious as to what I'm doing. Um, but once I'd won like a pretty big amount, what I did is when I got dealt a hand, if it already didn't have at least a pair, I would just restore. And I kept just restoring because what you're dealt is completely at random. So I just kept restoring until I at least had a pair and try to work off a pair to get three of a kind or something better than a pair. So that was something I did to try to hurry up the second hand of gambling. So you use the pen and talk about how you're on the fourth floor. He goes in the room and you use the pen and say, hey, uh, he's in room 404, so get ready to back me up. And he says, hey, go. you know what, I have a proposition for you. I really like your style. And you say, I'm interested. And he's like, cool. And then what's
what's going to happen is the phone rings and he says, Hey, I have to just go into the next room. And when he comes out, he's about to recognize you as a cop. So at this point, if you don't have your backup, he's getting right there. He pulls out a gun and basically you quickly dive to the floor. The backup kicks down the door, which draws his attention and you guys lay some bullets into him, but do not deliver a fatal blow. You basically just critically wound him, and he is arrested. And it, here we go through all the charges that he gets. And she says, please bring me the verdict. She reads it. Guilty as charged. Guilty as charged. Guilty as charged. Guilty as charged. You have a life sentence. And uh, he looks at you and says, this isn't over. You're a dead man. And it says, you kind of know you're not free of the Death Angel. And that is because Bleak's Quest 2 is on its way. Uh, and so you have a huge celebration. Um, all these cops are there. Get the key to the city. Yeah. And it says, we hope you've enjoyed Police Quest, and I hope you've enjoyed this playthrough. It talks about some other games you can play, those that have already beaten King's Quest and Leash Suit Larry. So please, handcuff that like button, arrest the subscribe button, and enjoy my channel for more content.